to your paper right there. Um, if this is our triangle, the hypotenuse is 15 miles, one of the legs is 13 miles, we're trying to find the other leg. Let's set up the Pythagorean theorem, 13 squared plus x squared equals 15 squared. So 13 squared is 169, I think. Is that correct? And 15 squared is 225. Okay, now I'm going to double check because it's so really unsure about that. 13 squared. Yeah, 169. We're good. Okay, subtract 225 minus the 169. We get 56. So x squared is equal to 56. And we take the square root. Now, on the previous problems, it said to round to the nearest tenth. So you found the square root of 56 in your calculator. Okay, um, so it's approximately 7.5. But if they want it in simplest radical form, the that we need to ask ourselves is, is that number divisible by a perfect square? Okay, is 56 divisible by a perfect square? Well, we've done a little bit of this before, but I just want to make sure that I've explained it to everyone. 56 is divisible by 4. Now, we want the biggest possible one. This is the biggest possible one, and I know that because what's left, 14, is not divisible by another perfect square, okay? If I had gotten something like 24, 24 could then be divided by 4 again. So you want to get the biggest possible. So what's really happening here is 56 can be written as 4 times 14, which technically means that we can write it like this, the square root of 4, thank you, times the square root of 14, and the square root of 4 is 2, and we cannot take the square root of 14. Okay, so 2 square roots of 14 would be the simplest radical form for this, and you can check it. You can type in 2 square roots of 14 and make sure that you get the same decimal approximation as the square root of 56, and you do. Okay, so most of the time they don't have really big perfect squares that go into them. Usually you're looking at 4, 9, 16, sometimes you might get one that's divisible by 29 when we're doing these problems. Uh, excuse me, 25, not 29, 25. Um, but for the most part, it's either 4, 9, or 16. Uh, is how these are going to simplify. Now, it's most definitely possible just simplifying square roots to be divisible by any of those perfect squares. But for these problems, they're going to stay smaller. Now, let me mention one more thing about triangles. You may have heard this before. You may not have. Another way to check yourself when you're using the Pythagorean theorem is that the hypotenuse should always be the longest leg in the triangle. Always. No exception. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest leg. So if you did something over here and you ended up getting 16.2, you would know that that's not correct because the legs cannot be longer than the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's a property of triangles you need to kind of have in the back. The Pythagorean theorem, and we're going to use it in finding the area of a triangle. So just as a reminder, I'm pretty sure you all know this, but the area of a triangle is one-half times the base times the height. Just as a little reminder, that height must be perpendicular to the base. The height is perpendicular to the base. So we're going to find the area of the triangles, and it says round intermediate values to the nearest tenth. Use the rounded values to calculate the next value. Um, your final answer to the nearest tip. So I'll explain what all that means here in just a second. Okay, so on number four, if we're trying to find the area of that triangle, can we find the area of it as is? No. We've got to find the base. Okay, we've got the height, and we have the hypotenuse, but we do not have the base. So we need to use our Pythagorean theorem to find that base. So at the risk of having a 6 and a B in my problem, I'm going to use a B since that's the base right there. So 6 squared plus B squared is equal to 10 squared. So we've got 36 plus B squared is equal to 100. When we subtract 36, we get 64. And when we take the square root of both sides, we get 8. 
for that base. Now we can find the area of our triangle. One half times the base times the height. One half times eight is four. Four times six is 24. Now there weren't any units on here, but I do want to point out that we just found an area. So those units, whatever they may be, are squared. So you don't necessarily have to write units squared on your paper. I just wanted to point that out since I just mentioned units a second ago. All right, on number five, we've got two triangles that are squished up against each other. Uh, and we want to find the area of that entire triangle. So it would be nice if we could assume that the missing piece right there in the base was five but we can't because it's just this piece right here that's five. We don't have the entire base. We have the height, but we need the rest of the base. So we need to use uh, the Pythagorean theorem. Or does this look somewhat familiar to the problem we just did? The hypotenuse is 10, one of the legs is eight, so what does it make sense that the other leg's gonna be? Six. It's the exact same triangle we just dealt with. It's just kind of flipped around. You can do it. I, I have absolutely no objections for you to use common sense uh, when it comes to some of these problems because sometimes some of these values are repeated. So the entire base is 11. So our area here is one half times the base times the height, which is eight. I almost just wrote down 10. Um, one half of eight is four. Four times 11 is 44. Okay, number six. Same deal as the last problem, except we have more missing pieces. We got to find the rest of the base. And what else do we have to find? The height. We don't have the height either. Which one can we find first? The height. We can't find the base because to use the Pythagorean theorem, you have to have two out of the three sides. Well, we only have one out of the three sides on the right side. So we need to find the height first. So that would be 12 squared plus eight squared is equal to 35 squared. So 12 squared is 144, 35 squared is 1,225. We subtract 144 from both sides. We get 1,081. Then we got to take the square root. Now, these instructions say round your intermediate answers to the nearest tenth. So that's what it's talking about. It's saying, don't worry about keeping that exact answer. Just round it to the nearest tenth, 32.9. Now, I don't really like rounding in the middle of the problem, but that's what the instruction says. So that's how the answer key is going to look. So that's 32.9. Now, we can find the base. So we've got 32.9 squared plus the base squared is equal to 59 squared. So 59 squared minus 32.9 squared. B squared is equal to 2,398.59. And then we take the square root. So B is equal to 48. Oh, we round that to the nearest tenth. Technically, that rounds it up to 49. That's why I don't like rounding in the middle of the problem. But anyways. <coughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, it's very, very, very close. Yeah, I did it in first period, and the two numbers were very, they differed by like, one was 0.6 and one was 0.2, so, uh, in the final answer. All right, so now we can finally find our area. 
area is one half times the base is 12 plus 49 times the height, which is 32.9. So one half times 12 plus 49 times 32.9. So the area is approximately 1,003.5 square yeats. And I say approximately because we did a whole lot of rounding in the middle of that one. <clears throat> but yeah, it's really, I think you still get 1,003. It's just, a, huh? One. Okay. So. Anyways, that's what the instructions said to do, so that's what that's where they get the answer from. Okay? So on your worksheets, 